Today let's study about testis. Testis are two in numbers which is placed inside the scrotal cavity. Okay, inside the scrotum. So the scrotum is the right testis. Similarly, we have the left testis inside the left scrotal sac. Okay, the left testis is little lower when compared to that of the right testis. Each testis is oval shaped organ and it has got the following poles the upper pole and the lower pole an upper pole and a lower pole so this is the direction here so this is upper pole and this is the lower pole upper pole and lower pole okay then it has got two borders the anterior border and the posterior border the posterior border can be identified by looking into this structure this is the epididymis epididymis will be present on the posterolateral aspect of the testis this is the epididymis okay which will be present on the posterior aspect okay next it has got two surfaces the lateral surface and the medial surface this is a medial surface so lateral surface can be identified by looking into this gap which is present between the testis and the epididymis this gap this gap is called the sinus of epididymis this gap is called the sinus of epididymis which is present between the testis and epididymis The side of the testis can be determined by looking into the poles and the surface and the sinus of the epididymis. This sinus of the epididymis will be always facing posterolaterally. Since it is facing posterolaterally, this testis when it is holded like this by holding the spermatic cord and the epididymis facing posteri uh, is uh, and the epididymis at a posterior border placed in the posterior aspect, you can see the sinus is placed on the posterolateral aspect. So this belongs to the left testis. This is actually the left testis okay this is actually the left testis next we have two appendix in relation to the testis and the epididymis you can see this projected part of the epididymis here is called the appendix of the epididymis this projected part of the epididymis here on the it is anteriorly placed on the head of the epididymis the epididymis has got the following parts the head the body and the tail okay it has got the head the body and the tail so the head of the epididymis has got this project projection this is called the appendix of epididymis then there is one more appendix which is related to the testis you can see in this specimen clearly there is a small projection here along the upper pole of the testis and this is called the appendix of testis this is called the appendix of testis. This is the appendix of testis. Again, we will revise the parts of the testis. So, it has got an upper pole, it has got a lower pole, anterior border and a posterior border, anterior border and a posterior border. It has got a lateral surface and a medial surface. Okay. Next, coming to the coverings of the testis. You see this testis specimen, the entire testis and the epididymis is covered by this layer called the tunica vaginalis. This layer called the tunica vaginalis. Once you open up the tunica vaginalis layer only, we can see the testis and the epididymis separately. Okay. So this layer of tunica vaginalis is called the parietal layer. So the parietal layer of the tunica vaginalis will be enclosing the entire testis and the epididymis. Next, coming to the visceral layer, so there are two layers of tunica vaginalis. The second one is visceral layer. Visceral layer is closely, it is related to the organ, it is related to the testis and the epididymis. So, what the, this glistening layer which is attached close to the uh, testis is called the visceral layer of the tunica vaginalis. This visceral layer is absent on the posterior aspect. You can see it is absent on the posterior you can see this this visceral layer is coming till here along the medial so this is the medial surface this is the lateral surface easily you can identify by looking at the sinus of the epididymis so the medial surface if you follow the tunica vaginalis the visceral layer it is getting reflected once it reaches near the posterior aspect and it is getting reflected onto the parietal layer okay it is getting reflected onto the parietal layer next coming to the lateral aspect the tunica vaginalis layer comes here and gets reflected onto the see the medial aspect of the body of epididymis medial aspect of the body of epididymis okay 
So it is getting reflected here, then again it is covering the epidermis on its lateral aspect. Okay, it is getting covered, uh, the epidermis is getting covered by the visceral layer, then again it reflects back to the parietal layer. Okay, this is about the reflections of tunica vaginalis. The next covering of the testis is seen once you open up the visceral layer. Next, when we see the visceral, after opening up the visceral layer, after opening up the visceral layer, we can see this thick fibrous layer, this thick fibrous coat. Okay, this thick fibrous coat is called the tunica albuginea. The tunica albuginea. Okay, this fibrous coat is thickened posteriorly. If you open up the testis, now we have just cut and opened the testis, you can see this thickened part of the tunica albuginea here, this area, which is having some venous plexus also. These are actually forming the pampiniform plexus of veins. So this cut section, this thickened part of the fibrous part is called the mediastinum testis. Okay, this is called the mediastinum testis. This is nothing but the posterior thick part of this layer itself, the tunica albuginea. Okay, from the mediastinum testis, we can see multiple small septi, septes which are formed. We can see this. These are the multiple small septes. You can see this white thing. This is actually the septes. These septes will be attaching the mediastinum testis to that of the outer layer of the tunica albuginea. Thus, this is multi, it, it is having many septes. It is giving many septes which will be dividing the testis into multiple lobes, okay, multiple lobules, okay. Totally, we have around 200 lobules like this. These septus will divide the testis into around 200 lobules. So, each lobule will contain 1, 2, 3 seminiferous tubules. You can see, can you see the highly coiled structure here? This is actually the seminiferous tubule. Each lobule will have 1, 2, 3 seminiferous tubules. These highly coiled seminiferous tubules totally around 600 uh, seminiferous, around 600 seminiferous tubules will be there. If you calculate around 600 seminiferous, this highly coiled structure, once it reaches near the mediastinal testis, it will become straight. Okay, it will become straight to form the straight ducts which will form multiple so these straight ducts are the straight tubules. These straight tubules will form a network of tubules inside the mediastinum testis, okay. It will form network of uh, tubules and this network of tubule is called rete testis. It's called the rete testis which will be present in the mediastinum. So this area is the mediastinum. So inside the mediastinum there will be rate testis and these rate testis once it reaches near the epidermis okay once it reaches near the epidermis you can see the head of the epidermis here it will form efferent ductules okay it will form efferent ductules it will form efferent ductules these efferent ductules will go into the head of the epidermis and here these efferent ductules will be highly coiled. You can see the efferent ductules will remain highly coiled in the head of the epidermis. Okay. These highly coiled efferent ductules slowly it will become a single duct. That is the duct of the epidermis which will also be coiled here. A single coiled duct which will be present in the lower part of the body and in the tail of the epidermis. Then it will continue as a vast difference. Okay. Then it will continue as vast difference. That is about the seminiferous tubules, the lobules and the seminiferous tubules which are present inside the lobules. Okay. Next, when we talk about the coverings of the testis, it can be classified into intrinsic and the extrinsic coverings. Okay. So, the intrinsic coverings of the testis okay, have three layers, three layers. This is actually the visceral layer of tunica vaginalis. Once we open up the visceral layer of tunica vaginalis, we can see the tunica albuginea. So, inside the tunica albuginea, we have one more coat that is the vascular coat. You can see some blood vessels there. Okay, that is the vascular coat that is the tunica vasculosa. That is the tunica vasculosa. So, underneath that we have the tunica vasculosa. This tunica vasculosa, you can see the blood vessels. 
this tunica vasculosa will be continuous with that of the septa will be continuous with that of the septa to reach up to the mediastinum testis okay so these are the three linings which will form the capsule of the testis so what are the things which forms a capsule of the testis from inside out we can tell is a tunica vasculosa then the tunica albuginea then at last the visceral layer of the then the visceral layer of tunica vaginalis okay which will form intrinsic layer otherwise we can call it as capsule of the testis if you see outside the capsule we have the visceral uh, the parietal layer of the tunica vaginalis okay this is actually the parietal layer of the tunica vaginalis and also the layers which will form the scrotal wall okay layers which will form the scrotal wall now we'll see the layers of the scrotum which forms the extrinsic coverings of the testis first is the skin okay outermost the skin followed by the external spermatic fascia so this is actually the external spermatic fascia this is actually the external spermatic fascia followed by the internal spermatic fascia this is actually the sorry uh, the second layer is actually the cremastric fascia this is actually the cremastric fascia then the last layer is the internal spermatic fascia so that is the internal spermatic fascia so these are the layers which will form the extrinsic coverings of the testis along with the parietal layer of tunica uh, tunica vaginalis thank you